Elder Breakthrough. I'm Dr. Debbie Silber, and today's guest is Abigail Wald. Parents come to Abigail Wald when they're tired of getting pushed past their breaking point, and they're ready to rise above behavior and circumstance to create the life they want for themselves and their children without apology. Tune into Abigail's podcast, Mother Flipping Awesome, and Hand in Hand, parenting with almost a million downloads collectively and find out why parents call her a badass stealthy sparkle wizard and <laughs> the Esther Perel of parenting. Head on over to motherflippingawesome.com forward slash app and to get one week of her app for free. So today my guest is Abigail Wald and we're going to be talking about how we sometimes betray ourselves as parents. If you're subconsciously passing along programming you don't mean to or if you're concerned about how your parenting messages are being received, you're going to love this episode. Here's Abigail. Okay. Hello. All right. Long time no see. So that was so great. Thank you so much. That's my pleasure. Was that um, helpful for you? Did that, were that okay yeah, for you? Yeah, sure. And, and you know what? I don't do enough parenting podcasts, but I should. I have four kids. They've been through everything. I really should. So, um, great. so it's great. And I love talking about them. That's my favorite topic. All right. So the way this works is uh, intro, outro, I do separately. This way we just dive right into content. Great. Um, and we're talking about how we sometimes betray ourselves as parents. So I love that. Okay. Sacred promise. All right. Okay. And I'm just going to call up. Um, I just want to call up what I had sent you. So just give me a second. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll loosely go by the questions to talk about silence, sacred promise. And we'll just start with that, I think, and just see where we go. Okay, great. Good? It's great. Anything I need to know before we um, talk? No, uh, I'll send people to the app at the end. Um, and, uh, you know, of course, there's the podcast, Mother Flipping Awesome podcast. And mm -hmm. I think that's it. I don't think anything else. Okay. All right. Then let's get going. Okay. Let me just take one sip. My stomach is <laughs> rumble. Can you hear it? No, I didn't right. hear it. Do you right. need to get a bite of something? Or are you okay? Uh, we're, we're good. Okay. Okay. They're used to hearing all kinds of things. Okay. <laughs> Do you want to know? I, I recorded my audio book and we had to stop because they told me they heard my stomach. I completely believe that. I, I was an audiobook narrator for years. Oh, wow. Well, you know, you have a great voice. I can see it. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. okay. Walt, Abigail Walt. All right. Okay, everybody, we're with Abigail Wall today, and we're going to be talking about how we sometimes betray ourselves as parents. So if you're a parent, stop what you're doing and listen, because I have just such an incredible handpicked expert to just talk to us about what goes on as parents. And you know what? We're always, of course, doing the best we can, but sometimes, you know, we can learn a tip, a strategy, a something to do it a little bit better. So Abigail is going to help us with us. Welcome. Hi, I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you so much, Debbie. Oh. I love the work that you do. And I'm very excited by all of the transformation that you are getting for your clients and everybody who comes to you. It's a very, very powerful thing to do to be able to heal that. Thank you so much. And, and it's interesting. Abigail and I just had a really interesting conversation on her incredible podcast. What's the name of it? Share it for Mother. Everybody. Mother Flipping Awesome podcast. And it, it really, really is. So, and as a mom of four, it was just such a pleasure to be on it. But let's just dive in. You, you know, you talk about the, um, the, the silent sacred promise. What is that? So my belief, and this is both in my own personal experience, but with every parent I have worked with, um, I used to think this was just me. I was like, you know, I, I know that there's these moments, right? That early on in my parenting, um, something would happen. You know, there would just be a flashpoint, like a, a, a great moment with my kids. And I was like, oh, wow, I'm a good parent. Like, this is good. You know what I mean? Or I'd have a horrible moment. And that moment had 
epic repercussions. It wasn't just bad in the moment. It was like, it was like you could hear like an echo, like ba-boom, ba-boom, ba-boom. And I was like, what's the echo? What is that? You know? And I was so fascinated by this, why these certain little moments could mean so much and other moments could just devastate me. And I started leaning into it. Like, what is this about? What is this from? And I started realizing there were moments in my childhood that I had thought like, oh, this is really good. When I have a child someday, I want them to experience this or have this, right? And then there were other moments, um, you know, for me, my silent sacred part of promise really first started when I was five years old. And uh, it started on a day that my, my mother was having a very hard day. And um, consequently, so was I, because I was five. And she was yelling at me and dragged me into the kitchen and you know, I, I say this with deep love for my mother. I, I, I don't harbor any ill will at all. Um, my heart is fully open for her, but she was really deeply struggling as a young mother at the time and didn't have support. And the reality is most of us parents don't have support. Parenting is not something that we value as a job, as a society. We don't, we don't even talk about it really. Do you know? I mean, really. Mm -hmm. And and it, by the way, if anybody ever doubted that, take a look at this pandemic and the position we've put parents in, right? So sure. that's a whole other conversation. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when I was five years old, I had this moment where I had wiggled myself in between these cabinets in the kitchen and my mom was yelling at me and I had a very clear vision of like, memorize this into your soul and when you are a grown up, don't ever be that person. And when you have children, don't ever let them, like my kids will never feel that way about me, right? Because in that moment, I was hurt. Um, and, and the third thing I thought, because in the moment she was yelling and I, I thought to myself, I don't like this. I need to find a way to change my reality. And so I started singing, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Mm -hmm. And it worked. I changed my vibration. It changed my experience. Um, she was sort of confounded by it, I'm sure. Um, and I remember thinking, I just found the secret of the universe. I'm going to control my experience. Nobody else can ever control how I feel about life, no matter what's happening to me. Right? You and, know, yeah. I, I love the I love the the proactive nature to that because we forget that we have a say in in how we go about raising kids like i remember i came from it was i i certainly did not want to repeat it and people teach us the most what to do and also what not to do and i remember being pregnant with my first and i i made a vow to myself i said you know what i'm gonna act like i'm almost dyslexic because i know how to memorize and regurgitate what i learned and i wouldn't be serving my kids if that's the case so instead i'm going to they do something i'm gonna act like it's almost all jumbled up in my head and I'm going to unjumble it before it comes out. And that was one of the greatest ideas at the time. And yeah. it really, really helped. Yeah. So. I mean, just putting on that filter to say, I'm not going to trust what I know, but, but then it's so difficult, right? Because I always say, and, and this was what was true for me too, is that we know like what we want, we know what we don't want, but we have no idea how to get there. It's like you've planned a vacation and you've got no tickets to get on the plane. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it's very difficult. And so you know, in that moment, I made those three choices of I'm not going to be that parent. My kids will not be that kid. And I will forever control my life and my life experience. And I, I broke all three promises to myself over the next 40 years. And then I learned how to keep them and mm -hmm. learning how to keep them for real was an incredibly empowering experience. Um, but in those first few years of parenthood, I found myself completely overwhelmed. Uh, my both of my kids had had major medical issues in the first few years, threw me into some major uh, post-traumatic stress. Mm -hmm. And um, my older son had had multiple open heart surgery. I mean, it was like oh big goodness. stuff. Yeah. And so, you know, I was, my father had died out of nowhere in that first three months. Like, it was just like, it was just boom, boom, boom. And so my whole world, there was a ton of shock in those years and a ton of recoding. And I was this new person and here I was an adult. And all of a sudden, all of the control that I built for my life in my 20s and my 30s, um, it disappeared because now I had kids and, you know, my father had died and I was having some health issues. My kids had had health issues and everything was completely out of control. And all of a sudden I was like, oh, 
I never was a person who actually mastered my life. I just controlled my life well enough that I thought I had mastery. And those are not exactly the same, right? And so that was a huge revelation for me. But but really one of the things that I kept coming back to was this silent sacred promise of I can't fail at that. Like I have to find a way to keep this vow to myself. And I, and I find every parent has this. They they made it either like you did when you're carrying your first child or they made it um, as a child like I did. But it's this moment of I'm going to give my kids something different, better, or even the same, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But what if you can't give the same? What if your situation is different than your parents? And so now you think you're failing because you've you've encoded this idea of what success and failure means without necessarily revisiting as you did, like I'm gonna revisit my concept of success and failure, mm -hmm. yes? Mm -hmm. So, you know, when I first found myself yelling at my child after, which never happened until I had a second child and then I was overwhelmed. And I remember the first time I ever yelled at my older son that I was literally in so much shock and I thought, oh my God, I just did it. I just destroyed my life. I just broke every promise, I, that's it. Like I mm -hmm. felt so low. I, I literally thought I don't deserve to breathe, wow. you know? It, it, and I wonder if that's you know, it, it being incredibly hard on yourself. Here's the thing too. And I remember motherhood was such a new arena for me. So I was so insecure and I, I just assumed every other mom must know better than me because yeah. I'm, I'm new to this. And it really took time and it took a few kids <laughs> for me to say oh i think i may know what i'm doing here and it's it's interesting as you're sharing that i'm remembering another story where there was something else that went on in the house in, in where i grew up and i said oh i'm never doing that again and i'll never forget it was another one of my kids w doing a, a pre like a tween uh, r rant and it was awful and and abusive and I remember I had been taking it personally, but there was something that changed that day and she was going bananas. And all of a sudden I stopped and I said, wow, I must be doing such a great job because you know you could say or do anything and you never risk my love. Yeah. You sense that unconditional love where I never had that. And then, and then I walked away <laughs> and it was like, we were both like, well, I don't know what happened, but it was pretty cool. And it was just really one of those moments, like when you were so conscious of mm -hmm. not repeating what didn't work, we can create something so much better. I tell my kids too, listen, I'm sure I'm going to do thousands of things wrong, but I love you fiercely and I don't mean it. So just setting the stage now, it's never intentional. Carry on, <laughs> yeah. carry on, carry on. <laughs> Absolutely. And I do think we are so hard on ourselves. Um, but I also think that um, to me, I've come to believe that this silent sacred promise is a sort of soul's code, right? And the, it's it's good and bad. And the 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 bad of it is if you stay, it's like it's like staying to the letter of the law instead of the intent of the law. You know, mm -hmm. you kind of have to recode yourself to go. They're actually hidden inside that answer. That answer I made up when I was five, or that answer I made up before I even had children and knew. You know, like all of us are like, oh, my child will sleep really, right? You know what I mean? Like then you have kids and you're. Like, like, oh, or you have your first kid and they sleep so beautifully. And you're like, see, I knew my child would sleep. And then you have like kid number three and you're like, oh, it wasn't me. Right. right. You know what I mean? And it's like that whole process of, I mean, having children is such an undoing. It's such a psychological undoing. And it's beautiful because you get to redo. And, and that like death and rebirth of the self as a parent is so intense. And, and that's really what I do. I'm a spiritual midwife for parents to go through that death and rebirth process. But I, I, I imagine you learned so much. I mean, you said, you know, you, you weren't kind of, it sounded like you weren't showing up the way you would have wanted to when uh, the kids were really young and then you lost your, you lost your dad. But that's also such a profound time because you're learning so much about who you are, um, about the depth of love, about what, you know, about so many different things. Um, so what did that lead to? Like, what did you learn from, from there? And how did that, how did that, to, you know, show up in the, the next level of parenting for you. Yeah, it's so interesting. Yeah. So, you know, um, so first of all, I am 
a strong willed human being. Okay. Like that's just who I am. I never really knew that. And, um, it's very funny because, you know, I'm the person that if you say it can't be done, I go, fine, you can't do it. I'll find a way. Mm. Right. That's just, that's just my nature. Okay. And, um, and so I had a very clear personal survival instinct. And so when it all started going, not how I wanted it to, I also, it was like that personal survival instinct kicked in with this almost thing from when I was five that felt like a spiritual soul's code, right? And I was like, oh, this is your time, right? It was, it's almost like, like, uh, you know, the, the sort of classic hero moments where you, you know, you go sit under a tree for 40 days or you don't eat or you, you know, it was like, that was my alchemical fire mm -hmm. and it all hit. And the moment I was a parent, I was reliving my childhood. I was forgiving my mother so beautifully and so deeply, um, which I'd already done, but in new ways. And, and so I then at that point really started to understand I am not willing to not figure this out. And, and it was the love of my children that carried me through, right? I am literally not willing to fail at this. Mm -hmm. And so I started learning and learning and learning. And to be honest with you, almost everything I learned made me angry and made me worse. It pissed me off. A, because I'm strong-willed. But B, because it didn't fucking work. Mm. And it made me feel that... I couldn't, sorry, do you want me not to swear? I apologize. Fine. I, I just, um, I just made it to mark it explicit. It's Don't okay. worry. Oh, okay. <laughs> no worries. Um, and, and I, I really, um, what happened was for each one of those things, they made me feel broken. Like, well, well, I'm not this peaceful, perfect, gentle parent, or there's something deeply wrong with my child because I'm doing that stuff and it doesn't work. And, and I couldn't figure out what was going on. And it just all made me feel worse and worse and worse until finally I was like, no, I'm going to trust myself. I know there's something deeply powerful happening here. And actually, um, luckily, I, I literally, when I my oldest son was three years old, I got to a point where I was sincerely filling out a $900 intake form for a psychiatrist for him and me. Mm -hmm. And I was considering putting my three-year-old on medication, which is like so unbelievably crazy for me to say. If you knew me personally, you'd be like, I'm sorry, what? Like, mm -hmm. you know, I, 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 that would be like me entering a, a surfing competition in Australia or like, I, it just, it's just so not who I am. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. um, although surfing in Australia sounds fun. I was going to say, it sounds kind of I mean, nice. <laughs> that sounds nice. That sounds nice. This was not nice. Um, and I was, I was really not, it just was so not my identity. And, um, and I had this moment where I was like, Whoa, I am so off course. And I wound up reaching out to hand in hand parenting. And that was the first thing that made sense to me. And it was the first time somebody started saying, like, listening to me and hearing me and giving me tools that worked. They were very radical, spiritual, simple, practical tools. And so I started delving into that and I spent years learning and I became a certified hand in hand instructor. And, um, and that really worked for me for many years. And I still teach those tools. I love those tools. I support hand in hand. I did the hand in hand parenting podcast for two years. Um, it was it was a beautiful time in my life. It really helped put me on the path. And I want to stop you there because how did it impact your children? What was the difference you saw in them? Oh, massive. I mean, tantrums started going down. I didn't think they had anything wrong with them. I started to realize there was nothing wrong with me, that everything that happened was okay and deserved mm -hmm. to be listened to and respected. And that I wasn't aiming for some perfect outcome where I was could be valued. And it was really profound. You know, and, and I love that you mentioned the whole perfect thing. I remember when my kids were, they were young. I mean, they're, you know, 25, 24, 20 and 19 now, but it, it, you know, we'd go to school, let's say, and you'd see the most beautiful paintings hanging up on the wall of preschool. And I'm thinking that mom stayed up all night long 
<laughs> to do that masterpiece. And I mean, my kids were the ones who had the glue dripping and, and all of this stuff. But I remember being so insecure about that too. I'm like, but wait a second. I could have made it maybe look a little bit better, but it's it's theirs. And and what do you what do you do here? Is it is it about what you know what's perfect or is it about what's perfect? For, from them and all these questions kept coming up. And I think it's really that deep insecurity of, of what's okay as a parent. Yeah. Well, and I think this is where it gets to the issue of betrayal is we betray ourselves constantly as parents and we betray our children. And I didn't know that until that time. And I thought looking outside for all these answers was me trying to be a better parent. And it was, it was a necessary part of my journey. But the truth of the matter is when parents work with me, one of the first things I say to them is we're not going to give you just a framework to answer your problems. Yes, I do give you a framework, but the framework is for you to find yourself, for you to find your answers instead of trying to take all the answers that are like what it's supposed to look like. Because I think that is the biggest betrayal that parents experience constantly from society, from themselves, and then towards our children of like, I need to turn you into what you're supposed to look like. I need to turn me into what I'm supposed to look like, you know, and then, and then from society, like, why don't you look like this? And so I just say like, for me, when parents work with me, that stops now, right? We're not doing that anymore. And you know, it's so great about that too, because there are, it puts so much stress on the child. Like I have, I have one of my kids who uh, just did not feel good having social media. She said she would take pictures to get the likes, wouldn't get the likes, it made her feel worse. And she deleted it. And as a teenager at the time, that was like oxygen. And I thought, wow, that's a, that's a bold move. And so uh, different from what everybody else around me, you know, was suggesting and, and what they were doing best thing for her the so absolute gorgeous. best thing and and it was one of those moments where i realized it, they know best if check in with themselves if it doesn't feel right it's because it's not and yeah, well, and, and there's so much energy about fixing our children, you know, people come to me all the time with like this behavior problem, right? And I always say, what's the rightness in it? Right? Not that the be we don't need to keep it there. I agree with you. That's not a great behavior. But there's a rightness in it. And until you hear the rightness in somebody's behavior, because somebody's always doing the best they can, mm -hmm. always. Now, sometimes our best is shitty. That, okay, that's true. But they're always doing the best they can and there's a reason for that and you have to understand and like remove the obstacles to being better rather than trying to teach somebody how to be better we're already at our best we already all want to be optimized it's just like in us and and so you know if you stop um if you if you're trying to teach people how to be better you're almost condescending to them you're almost in, it's like teach you how to share actually when children are you know like not in a scarcity principle when children like can understand how to let go of things when children feel safe when their cup is full they naturally will share all children okay and and i really mean that it, it will happen naturally when you teach a child to share you're actually overriding that child's natural protective instinct mm. <clears throat> excuse That's me and when we override a child's natural protective instinct that child learns to not trust us you don't get me you're not in my best interest and then that's the the first parts of the dissolution of the relationship and then you sow those seeds and you know you you reap that harvest in the teenage years and that's rough right and i think it also teaches kids not to trust themselves they're feeling something and then you know we as parents may say well you, you know get over it or don't feel that or no it's no big deal well yes it is absolutely and 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 feelings aren't the only truth. And, and that's a whole other layer of work, right? Which is you feel that and that's great. And why, and what do you wanna do about it? And, you know, I tell parents because feelings, you know, we can also get caught in this world of like, oh, you feel something, you're, you're, you know, let me just be with you in that feeling. And sometimes, you know, look, everything has its um, beautiful parts and its downfalls. But one of the downfalls of gentle parenting is like, I think, a lack of leadership 
right? If it's too much about just listening and too much about being there, where's the leadership? Where's the vision? Mm -hmm. I always say parents are the CEO of the family, okay? Mm -hmm. And you have to have a vision. You don't just listen. You listen and you lead and you listen and you lead. And that's a whole other level of skills that need to be taught to the parent and for the child, right? And so it's complicated. But I, I just want to say, when I talk about listening, I talk about listening to a child's soul, not just to what the child is saying. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes a child says something, but actually their soul needs something different. So we should deeply listen, but we need to listen to their soul, not just what they're saying. That's so important. Right? And, I, and I think it's also, we're trying to protect them from so much, but how else do they learn to cope? Like, I'll never forget one of my kids had, I think like a, a violin th thing that you had to bring to school that day for their lesson. And I remember every single Monday or whatever that day was, I'm like, make sure you bring your violin, make sure you bring your violin. And then I remember the day I reminded them a hundred times and they didn't. And I was like, you know, it would be so easy for me to run to school and drop this off, but they'll never learn. And it was at the time agonizing for me to say, I'm not going to do it. I'm just yeah. not at painful, but you know, something every Monday after that, they had that violin with them. So it's, it, it's one of those things. I think we need to, it's our responsibility to teach and, yes. and give them these, these coping skills. What happens when they, you know, what are the consequences for their own actions? And I know we're so busy trying to protect them, but there's no better way to learn. No, absolutely. And and we do, we get so sucked into the tasks of parenting and all of that. And, you know, we're carpoolers and we're, you know, sibling broker, bicker, bicker brokers, mm -hmm. right? You know, and um, all of it, you know, we, 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 we get so sucked into this. And I always say, you know, we're not just quesadilla makers, we are soul shapers. And you, you really want to be coming at your parenting from that perspective. And let me just give an example of like, how we can get off course by our our silent sacred promise um and how that works to sometimes um create problems and what the alternative to that is right so uh this is actually a beautiful story about a family who um the dad had you know really wanted to make something very beautiful for valentine's for his family and really had a value around sitting at the table together and the daughter couldn't sit at the table. She's super squirmy and wiggly and moving around all the time. And the dad had put all this effort into this lovely dinner. And like, this is how I show my family. I love you. And this is how I'm going to know that I have a successful family that can appreciate my love. And meanwhile, he's basing it all on something she's literally not capable of doing yet. Mm -hmm. Right. So just a recipe for disaster. Right? right. And so, you know, this is an example of like, yes, it makes sense. It's beautiful. It's wonderful but it's going to get you into a whole heck of a lot of trouble. So if instead of the specific of like, this is what it needs to look like, and that's how I'll know it's successful, and that's how I'll know my child is moving the needle and getting better, you know, what if we go from the values of, I really want to be able to give you things and have you receive them. I really want to know that you care and see the beauty of what I'm doing. I really want to know that you're learning how to sit at the table and, you know, all sorts of things like that. Right. So how do we then take that into action? And so, you know, I suggested like maybe she could go and cook with the dad and prepare the dinner with him. And then that maybe it becomes their kitchen time that becomes mm -hmm. the lovey time because she's still able to move in that time. And so now they have a new family tradition of, of cooking this beautiful Valentine's dinner together, right? Because maybe she still can't sit quite yet. Maybe we get her to sit for an extra 10 seconds or an extra five minutes by telling stories from his childhood. Mm -hmm. And like that keeps her engaged and it still gives that same feeling, but the parent is doing a different thing to get that same end result of it, you know, maybe a little bit different, but like that same itch scratched, so to speak. Well, right? you know, and it really speaks to knowing your child, knowing what they're capable of and speaking, uh, just addressing something according to their personality and what they're best able to handle. And it's so true. I mean, every parent knows their kids so well. So one may be really receptive to the sitting down and just they're so thrilled they have this beautiful meal where another one likes to be actively engaged. It's almost like, you know, know your, your kids love languages too. You know, how, absolutely right. How do they, how do they receive a message? What's the best way for that message to come across? Like, for example, I had one of my kids, I spent so much time and all the other kids would say that I spent more time on this one child than all the others combined. But meanwhile, it was the wrong love language. 
And I've learned that now. <laughs> I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> I could have spent half the time. So, you know, but you live and learn. So it's it's knowing. And I'm, um, of course, I'm coming at it now as they're older, but I wish I knew that back then. Yeah. yeah it's, it's so interesting. You know, I mean, I think the thing is, is when we can let go of our solution of what we think is the right answer, and we can drill down instead into our values. And it's not what you've been told a child should be able to do, but it's like, what is my child capable of? What truly matters to me? What are my core values? What are my child's values? And then we co-create a solution together. That's the opposite of betraying ourselves. It's deeply listening to what we want to do and deeply listening to the fabric and temperaments of our family to know, here's how we actually solve this in our family that's authentic for us. And maybe it's, you know, grittier and maybe it's not so perfectly gentle. Maybe it's funny, maybe, you know, like in our family, um, I don't think we're like the gentlest, peacefulest parenting, you know, out there on the block. I, I'm from New York. I want to make jokes all day. Like, you know, everybody knows I curse like a sailor. Like, like, I don't mind. It's fun for me, you know, like my kids will come in and we'll banter and it's hilarious. And, you know, when they were younger, I'd like wrestle them to the ground and they put ice in my pants and we'd have fun wrestles. It's like, you know, we'll still do that sometimes. It's like, it's it, it that's the kind of life I wanted. It wouldn't have felt right to me to just be like, uh-huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, that just wasn't that wasn't ever gonna feel real for me, right? So this is really about being the type of parent that is just it, it, according to who you who you are. So I always try to get into the minds of my my listeners and viewers, and I know some of them are like, oh my gosh, I've screwed up so badly. What do I do now? So mm. speak to that parent who just thinks I have messed up so badly. I was so overwhelmed, let's say with my own betrayal. And because of that, I haven't been there for the kids or I haven't shown up in the way that I want to, I need to. Speak to that parent. Oh, I love this. So, so here's what I want to say. Go back to your own childhood and imagine now being, let's say, a teenager. And imagine all the hurts that maybe you have sustained from your family. And imagine now that whoever it is, that parent that you feel maybe let you down, comes in the room and they sit down on the floor or next to you and they say, I just want to share something to you from my heart. And I want to let you know that I feel like I'm seeing a lot of things more clearly now. And I realized I was trying to do this and I didn't listen to you or I didn't hear you or I, you know, could have done better here. And um, I just want you to know, I'm actually sorry. I just want you to know, I would love the opportunity to learn to do this a different way. And I'm going to make mistakes, but can I try? And do you have anything you want to tell me about how much all of that has hurt you? Because I'm ready to listen. I just love that. And what I love is the honesty. Could you, I, I just don't believe you can ever go wrong by being honest. What do you want to make sure all the parents know or guardians before we wrap up? I want you to know that whatever you see out there is not your story. You have to learn how you thrive and you have the ability to transform your life. You have the ability to make change in your children. You have the ability to take your core values and make those promises come true as long as you stick to the intent behind them and not the exact solution you came up with when you were five or when you were pregnant. And you actually can learn how to transform every single one of these moments, be it before birth, be it after, be it when your kids are toddlers, be it when that child is 15, because that 15 year old child would have been happy to have that parent come in as long as it was real and honest nobody ever truly feels like that's it do you know as a child like you always are open to that love you always want that bridge to be healed right mm -hmm. if it can be if it were honest if it were real okay and and that's a crucial point it has to be real um and so i just want you all to know that it is literally your um ability to matter in this world that parenting isn't just about your kids you are showing them how we create how we matter how we transform and you have the right to do that in your own family and for yourself and that holding on to those core values and that promise in a positive way is one of the biggest gifts that you can give to yourself and your family i love that so what i got from that was uh it's never too late and be not just the role model, but a realistic role model. Mm 
of good, of bad, of showing up, of doing your best, of failing, of picking yourself back up again, all of it, because yeah. uh, they, they see it, they learn it. And then, and then we're, we're proud of, of just the example that we're sharing, even Absolutely. when it's not our best, which is wonderful. Where do we go to learn more about you and the great work you do? Oh, thank you so much. Uh, you can go to motherflippingawesome.com and I do have a gift for you guys, but I, I do want to just add one other thing, which is to say one more important piece to know is don't expect that you can do this on your own, that being in community heals and listening to other people's stories heals you. You will learn more from other people's reality sometimes than you do from your own. And that, you know, this is work that if, if you didn't have it as a child given to you, you don't have it in your DNA. You need to experience giving, like having somebody give it to you and receiving that transformation before you can offer it for your own family. So please, please get that support, get what you need as long as it feels authentic for you. Um, all right. So on that note, you can go check out motherflippingawesome.com. You can go to motherflippingawesome.com slash app and you'll get a fur, uh, you know, one week free, your first week free on the app. Uh, and the app will be live in mid April, uh, 2021. Beautiful. Thank you so much for your wisdom, your insights. I know there are so many parents uh, listening, watching, saying, okay, you know what? It's, it's not too late. And what my greatest wish is that this inspires some deep, meaningful conversations and some renewed relationships with their kids. Yeah, absolutely. It feels so good when you get it right. You know, it's, it's so, it, there's just nothing better than being able to transform what was painful into something beautiful. It's, it's a beautiful harvest to reap. So beautiful. Thank you so much, Abigail. I love Abigail's no-nonsense direct approach to parenting. I mean, who knows if we're doing it right until our kids are a bit older and we see how our messages have been interpreted and received. That's why it's so helpful to be mindful of what we're doing and people like Abigail can help. Stay in touch with uh, Abigail by going to motherflippingawesome.com and we'll have all of our information in the show notes at thepbtinstitute.com forward slash podcast. Here's my biggest takeaway. Be the role model. Your kids are watching you. Show up honestly. Your kids are smarter and more perceptive than you think. Get support, whether it's to bounce ideas off of, get a different perspective or insight. It's helpful to get support from people who've been there and understand. Speaking of support, have you checked out the PBT Institute membership community? Imagine everything you'd ever need to become your physical, mental, emotional best. Community, support, certified coaches and practitioners you could schedule time with, daily classes on all kinds of interesting topics, curated experts teaching advanced strategies in the areas of health and mindset, spirituality, personal development. Imagine the most friendly, welcoming, and supportive place to become your best, and it's all online. Nothing like this exists, and I am so excited to welcome you. Go to thepbtinstitute.com forward slash join to learn more. Thanks for listening. Can't wait to be with you next time, and here's to your breakthrough.